competition. My wife, I got me moving like a tactician. Truth of silence disappears like a magician. Oh, the wife, I got me feeling like a tactician. Traffic silent disappears like a magician. Wanna make that money flip like a tactician. Paradigm is um, agorism, the free market, economics, uh, direct democratic economy, people's economy. Um, it's actually the majority of the world's economic activity. Most of the world is not um, part of the, the Western system or the established system of banks. For example, in the Middle East, people have a very strong moral uh, community fabric, um, very strong alliances like tribes and families and all that kind of stuff. And that's why states are very authoritarian because they're actually very weak. And, uh, and people, nobody uses banks, There's no, people completely mistrust the banks. Instead they use informal systems of Hawala money transfer. And uh, interestingly now, in, um, in uh, Lebanon, all the OTC shops are dealing with USD Tether on Tron network. So you can go and you can change USD Tether and in Egypt, the premium on USD Tether is 15% uh, above the normal dollar. So if I sell USDT, I get 15% extra in terms of dollar value. Very interesting cryptocurrency is. And also, um, the crypto anarchists, um, they believed that we could use these modern uh, tools of cryptography to create uh, dark spaces in the internet. Like a like a forest where you know like gorillas can move and make a hide. They, they, they use the nature. They defend it with that nature. The system of, of um, authoritarianism, totalitarianism, seeks to turn everything into a desert, into a completely surveilled, um, visible space. Um, so we need to add distinction back to our geography on the internet. The way we do that is with cryptography. In particular, now cryptography is having a renaissance. There are a lot of new breakthroughs that are happening in cryptography, multi-party multi computation, uh, zero knowledge proofs, um, you know, uh, fully homomorphic encryption, even if in, in terms of the mathematics, you know, like a lot of very interesting theory, unknown order groups, hyperelliptics, you know, uh, divisors, all the things you can do with that. So it's a, a, a never seen such a, uh, uh, development in cryptography happening, and that is opening up entirely new design space and applications that can be created that before was not possible. So uh, and so, um, also uh, adding into this, so on the one side there's a development of cryptography, it's advanced a lot, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, huge because of cryptocurrency, there's a lot of money going into cryptography research. So, the tools that we have unlock entirely new design spaces. But the other thing is the government's gearing up to regulate crypto. Right now, USD Tether, they're like a very dodgy stable coin backed up by questionable stores of value like debt instruments and stuff. But essentially what they're doing is they're inflating the US dollar monetary supply with impunity. And that's only a power that the central bank has. So Crypto, it's, it's a big threat to the, the, dollar, the dollar as a system. Systems like, for example, uh, DAI or MakerDAO, they are collateralized by ETH, which is a, a virtual currency in cyberspace, to create more dollars out, out of thin air. So that is how, that's the main power that central banks have over an economy, is to allocate new credit and to allocate that credit. And so um, they're, they're, that's very threaten, threatening for them. Also, DeFi is very threatening and also anonymous technologies. So they you know, they you know, we, have, people instinctively now feel that there is a, the, the, the landscape is changing and the, you know, the, gear, the gears are turning where they're gonna try and heavily regulate Bitcoin. Already the SEC is, SEC already was serving many heads of, of DeFi projects, like Do Kwon even got served by the SEC. So crypto is gonna split into two, there will be the completely bolted down, unusable KYC, 
uh, you know, white uh, side of crypto, which is what we call Reg Phi. And then the other side of that will be, it will force the, the other side of that, unencumbered side, underground. We'll make it, uh, that's what we call dark fire. That's the concept of dark fire, which is the side of crypto that remain unregulated and is forced to implement strong anonymous technologies to continue to exist. So uh, Monero is like kind of like uh, uh, cash, where it's like the main value that's transacted on the dark net markets. Like Monero have the community ethos and they have uh, uh, the usage in the dark net markets. And it's kind of like, it's, it's a type of money, it's like the equivalent of what Bitcoin is to Ethereum. Uh, DarkFi is an applications layer, which is uh, what, uh, where applications uh, are built. So there's a new field that's emerging, which is called anonymous engineering. And this, this is really new, this is what we're conceptualizing now. Like, or, or when we, whenever we like try to build applications now, just in the process of building applications, we uh, invent like new techniques or new uh, uh, abstractions we can use to build applications. As the field develops more, then these can be generalized so that people can, the the on uh, on experts can easily build applications. So uh, I just have a comparison, like how does it differ? between software engineering and cryptography engineering. So cryptography engineering is the primitives that you create. So for example, if I implement a new ZK algorithm or a new type of signature scheme, but the anonymous engineering, the, and software engineering is like, you know, writing code that can pass to instructions. The anonymous engineering is, okay, I want to build an application. How do I use these cryptography techniques or these cryptography primitives to design schemas or design applications? So um, the typical idea of a smart contract is you have a function and you like call and you execute the function to change the state to something else. And everybody in the network perform that, uh, that algorithm, that smart contract algorithm. But uh, a ZK contract is, is different. You, when we're working with uh, anonymity, the information about yourself is completely hidden and private. So you don't want to reveal that information. So, but you, so the way that it works is you have a proof, somebody who proves something, and you have a verifier. So I create uh, a type of contract that specifies what those rules are, and then I create proof. When I give you that proof, that proof says some statement about that secret data that I have without revealing what that secret data is. Like if the way, like if I wanted you normally to reproduce, um, you know that 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 change in state, then I would you know, to execute that function, then I would give you that data, and you'd just run that, that function with that same data and see, oh yeah, you got the same output, and everybody would do that. But with a ZK contract, it's different. Like, I make a proof that something happened, or about some relations between my data, and then I, I give you that, and then you verify that is correctly. So for example, oh, this is incorrect. It says anonymous forum, it should be anonymous DAO. So anonymous voting. So if, uh, to make a, for example, a proposal, I had to have a certain number of governance tokens, I can make a proof that the governance tokens in my wallet is bigger than the limit that is set in the DAO. And both of these quantities are anonymous. Nobody on the network can see this DAO, what's the parameter in the DAO, the DAO when it was configured, what is the minimum number of governance tokens that you need to make a proposal. And also they cannot see like, okay, I'm, I meet the threshold, but they can't see also what the, what well, the tokens in my wallet, so it's completely anonymous. So the, the person verifying it, he can't see any of those attributes, any of those values, but he sees that the statement is valid, and so therefore the state or the, in, in the state machine is updated and the proposal becomes uh, live. So, uh, okay, I'll just show you some example demo. If, for example, I wanted to make an anonymous vote, then the way that I can do that is I can create a, a, a random serial number and I don't give the serial number to the network, but I give a commitment to the serial number. So I, I, I do like an encrypted hash of the serial number 
Nobody knows what the serial number is, they just know that this is a new, this is a new output. So for example, uh, if you were starting a voting round at the beginning, you, people were like, each person who has the rights to vote creates one of these commitments. And then, and then after the commitments have been created, you start the voting, and then people essentially burn uh, each one of these commitments in an irrevocable way uh, but you don't know whose commitment corresponds to who, so you break the link completely. The way that you do that is you create a zero knowledge proof where um, you say, they. so what they do is they publicly reveal the serial number which was inside of the encrypted hash, inside of the commitment, and you create a proof saying that okay when we when we, ha when we create an encrypted hash of the serial number, which is deterministic, we get this coin, and the coin is in all of the set of all the, sorry, this uh, commitment, or commit, we call it a coin, is in the set of all the valid uh, uh, coins that were created at the before the vote began. And uh, the way that you do that is with a Merkel tree. So this is the burn operation, or you can call it a vote contract. And you see it saying, uh, it's produced, well, it's the actual code, we don't reveal the serial number, we actually reveal what's called the uh, nullifier. It nullifies the serial number, so it can't be reused. But you can see the uh, public key derivation and hashing. That's where you, uh, it's down here, up here, sorry. This is where you uh, create the coin or the commitment. But this is private, this isn't right. publicly revealed. And then you have the Merkel root inclusion proof, and then the Pedersen commitment for the vote. So uh, then this scheme can be generalized further to uh, payments. So That, that uh, coin value that we were talking about, uh, you can essentially put any number of additional attributes inside of the coin, and then you can make statements about those attributes. So as opposed to a vote, where you just make one vote for, uh, per person or per whatever, uh, with a coin, you have a value of the coin. So if I send value to someone else, I, I'm not like sending the whole coin, I'm sending just a bit of it. So I can split the coin into two. Like one that is go back to my wallet and one that go to them. Uh, so that's why we can create a transaction. So this is the mint side of things. And then this is the burn, the burn side. Essentially very similar to the vote one. Just extended now with this uh, additional value, which is the Pedersen commitment of the token's val value. And then you can use that. So, yeah, so, and then... Uh, we talked about the value here as this attribute, but you can also put other attributes. Token ID, you want to have multiple different tokens on the network. Uh, you, uh, you can put spend hooks when it's spent. You also have to execute an additional smart contract. Uh, and then maybe that smart contract wants to store some data there, so you have user data. And uh, essentially, uh, if you have that as well, you can create swaps. So you can create simple swaps between people. And so you have a transaction, and that's just very simple. There's one person makes one input, another person makes the other input. And uh, you, you both uh, publish an encrypted, an encrypted uh, hash of your public key. But then on the output, it also checks that it's the same encrypted hash of the public key. So you don't know what the public key is. It's an encrypted, encrypted hash, but you do know that it matches. And then you have your, your state transition function, which the state transition function corresponds to an ETH egg, the function that's called in the smart contract. Uh, you, have, you add an extra check that says that, for example, input one has the same uh, uh, public key as, as output one. That just the, you could, but because the, these are also both encrypted, the amounts and the currency type, you just see that it's that they correspond because they're all in encrypted hashes. And you do the same thing up input to and, and, and in output to as well. So that's a simple swap system. And even these systems, they can all be generalized to create an anonymous DAO. 
which we have like we work, we have like uh, 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 the schema worked out in, inside of uh, all the cryptography and zk workouts. And now we're building an application. This next month we're going to release a demo, which is um, you know the same payment system that you have normally. You know you have multiple currencies, so you, you know you have a token ID, and then you can have a uh, normal currency the, or, or several currencies and then also a governance token for a DAO and uh, something mints a new DAO which is an encrypted hash or a bunch of attributes so for example a proposal limit there's a minimum number of tokens to make, and make a valid proposal the quorum which is uh, what's for uh, a vote to pass it has to have a certain number of votes you know a certain level of activity and the approval ratio it doesn't mean uh, Fifty-five percent or seventy percent threshold for a vote to pass. Eight percent. So then uh, people can send uh, funds to the DAO, and uh, when they send the funds to the DAO, this spend hook that I talked about earlier, it, it invokes. Uh, it has a, another contract linked to it. So there's additional conditions you need to spend from the DAO, and they make a proof that says. Um, uh, my governance tokens is more than the limit needed to make a valid proposal for the DAO. And uh, the proposal just for now, it's very basic, but it could be more complicated things. But right now it just says like, oh, this proposal transfers X funds from the DAO treasury to this key P. And then everybody submits encrypted votes. And then at the end of the voting period, the votes are summed together using a, because they were encrypted, you can't, you don't have them normally, but they're, there's a type of mathematical encryption where you can add them all up together. And then a proof of a successful vote is submitted to a blockchain. And so then that allows, that unlocks those funds in the DAO to be sent to just that one public key P according to the proposal. So you essentially have anonymous DAO. And because we didn't want to lose like our, our community to, um, you know, sorry, to Discord and stuff like that, we made our own uh, anonymous peer-to-peer -peer chat system, which is part of the DAO tooling. Sorry. I won't full screen. Okay. So you can see here it's just uh, starting the, these peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer IRC nodes. They're peer no, sorry, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, our peer-to-peer -to -peer network. But it, ha it has uh, a local daemon for an IRC, and then you can connect to it with any IRC client, and you can chat to each other peer to peer. And so that way, there's like nothing, uh, no information locked. Anybody can change their nick and stuff like that. So that's that. And also, uh, Also, we uh, really dislike how like uh, projects get captured by GitHub, and they give all their data to Microsoft. So we create our own peer-to-peer uh, -peer task system. So we can all run these nodes, and it's synced between each other. And then we can, uh, if any of you have used Task Warrior, it's a similar kind of system. You know, where people can submit tasks, you can assign them to certain people, you can put due dates, uh, you can put, you can add annotations. Uh, you can start them, you can pause them, you can stop them. Like all the function, they have ranks, so levels of importance and priority, uh, all that, all that kind of stuff. So that that's part of our DAO tooling, and then. Uh, so then, okay, so any, uh, I encourage, people should go uh, look at this article on eGirl Capital. If you go to their writing section called Lunar Punk and the Dark Side of the Cycle, and this is what we call the Dark Cycle Thesis, which is uh, what I alluded to earlier with RegFi and DarkFi, where there's this bifurcation happen. And the thing is, is uh, uh, the people who try to seek regulation is that as soon as the regulators hit, hit back on them, it shatters their narrative. They lose strength, they lose power. Whereas in our case, we say 
our lo the government and we provoke the government and it causes the government to like react strongly against us, but then it galvanizes our course. Like, we say, look, this is what we are saying ha is happening. And so it actually strengthens us. That's an example of an anti-fragile narrative. And like now this is like what we see happening with the stance governments are taking towards crypto. And this is the this is the bull case for uh, Monero. And um, in particular, like we reinforce each other's strength. So what like now, in terms of like we, we have our projects and, and stuff, but to hedge against that, I'm I'm buying a lot of Monero because that's every time that we see we like push this narrative, we also see Monero pumps as well. So it's, so it like strengthens the communities. So yeah, check out that article. Thanks very much everyone. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, there's a lot of stickers and stuff now, if anybody can come up right now and take some, please take some. They're like glow in the dark. I just would like to ask maybe a naive question is about why you are using a monolithic encryption when you pass the parameter inside of this now. Why you are not using full homomorphic encryption? Yeah, we can use full homomorphic encryption. In fact, you can actually do uh, approximation of full homomorphic encryption by attaching like a multiplication proof as well. So then you have addition and multiplication. You can do all the, you can compute any complete function. But right now we just use uh, uh, Pedersen commits because we just need to sum the values for the inputs and outputs. But what uh, fully homomorphic encryption algorithm do you recommend? Which do you recommend any algorithm? Not in particular, but I would like to, to know your suggestion and what you would expect if homomorphic encryption could be better instead of using this parameter that you are using this now. It's not like one tool, it's like lots of different tools that have different properties and different uses and how you combine them to create an application. So for example, like multiply computation, it's very useful because you can poke the smart contract. Like in, in, in ETH, for example, you have this concept where a smart contract, sometimes you need to update the state. And the, and the, but the state to be updated, it needs to know some information. And usually those parameters are public. But in an anonymous system, how do you do that? And we have a bunch of nodes that they, they, they don't know the information themselves, but if, that they can compute a function on that data which is distributed between them. So then you can, for example, see in a market if somebody gets liquidated or if you need to update the state of some parameter, etc. And that also could be used for aud auditing as well. It's interesting as well. So, you, for example, Zcash, when they deployed the new Zcash algorithm, Halo 2, they tried to put uh, that everybody has to first go for a transparent address to get into the new system, just so you can see all the coins uh, become transparent. But a lot of people criticize that because it's like, oh, you're forcing everyone to de-anonymize their coins. But you could use MPC to solve that, for example. That instead of it just being made public, it actually spreads over several nodes or have partial information. OK, thank you. Any other questions? So, is Dark feel like a protocol, or because it's it's not like a its own blockchain, right? No, we have our own blockchain. We're developing an anonymous blockchain. Okay. Like we, right now, we have just a simple streamlet implementation, but there's uh, but we're working on another blockchain consensus algorithm, which is fully anonymous, has like anonymous leaders, anonymous staking, okay. everything anonymous. Cool. Maybe one last question. So um, you, you, with DarkFi, when you take um, uh, a, a coin from a transparent chain and then you uh, darken the coin, right, and then you send it to the cashier, I know those are like centralized now, but you have a plan to decentralize them, right? 
But um, are are the uh, are, are the addresses um, that you send the coin to are they linkable to the Dark Five project? Like if you like an outside actor were to uh, look at the address. Yeah, so I think that's a mistake. Uh, sorry, a lot of a lot of uh, projects or websites got coins blocked that way, and I think that's because they like allow their addresses to be linked. I mean, we have to uh, just create new addresses per person that are completely private between the two parties. I think that would solve that problem. I mean, it's just... Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Tactician.